Hey Pop Tropicans, Captain Crawfish here. Today I'm going to help you play through Nabuti Island, one of the featured islands of the month for May on Pop Tropica. Completing this island this month will net you some bonus credits, even if you've already beaten Nabuti Island before, and considering that it's one of the very oldest islands on Pop Tropica, maybe you have, but on the other hand, maybe you've never played it at all. Either way, I'm going to show you how to get through it and get those bonus credits. So let's get started. A bit of trivia for you is that this is the first island on Pop Tropica to feature another book series, in this case, Choose Your Own Adventure. Um, since then, we've done Magic Treehouse, Big Nate, and so many. This was the first, and it is actually based on a specific Choose Your Own Adventure book called The Lost Jewels of Nabuti. Here we are in the Nabuti Museum where we can find those titular lost jewels. So head over to this giant statue and then talk to the lady underneath it and she will explain to you that this totem is supposed to have seven jewels of Nabuti in it. However, it only has two right now. Five of them are missing. And if you think that it's going to be your job to find the five and put them back, well, you know Pop Tropica as well as anybody, I guess. Why are the jewels missing? Is there maybe a monster or a master thief? Uh, nah, they've been lost to the ages. That's cool. That gives us a lot of breathing room to explore and to try to find them. So having this conversation, and in particular choosing that third option, will, <laughs> and of course saying, yes, I'm in, will allow you to get a map from this woman. If you don't get the map, you won't be able to start the quest. So if you sit there saying you don't want to find the jewels, I guess that's your prerogative, but I'm here to have fun. So I say, yes, I'm going to take the map, head back up here and go back out onto Main Street. Nabuti is one of those islands that can be completed in a lot of different ways. You can kind of go one place before another. Um, before we go, let's talk to these people. These are three traders. They each look for a particular kind of item to trade. So ancient artifacts, flowers and herbs, and only cash or gold. So remember those. Those will all come in handy later. There's your common room. Now let's go. This guy says if we've got the map, we can go. So click on the plane to fly and now here's your map of Africa. There are several places that we can go to land. Just hover the cursor over the place you want to go to. There are diamond mines in South Africa, forests, safari, mountains of the moon, Blue Nile Falls, and of course Giza, that's in Egypt. We'll start at Blue Nile Falls because there are actually several things, well, maybe two, two things that we can do here. Head over to the right, jump up these platforms on the waterfall. Here's a suspicious looking bush that you should remember is there. When you get all the way up here, here's a lady standing with a fox, a chicken, and a sack of grain that she needs to move across the waterfall. This is kind of a classic brain teaser. You can't leave the fox with the chicken or the chicken with the beef because they'll eat whichever one you leave with them. So we need to get them across one at a time. Now the, the trick to this is that even though you can't leave them together, they can be on the same side of the falls as long as you are there with them. So yeah, I'm bringing the fox over to the chicken, but I'm not leaving the fox. I'm bringing the chicken back, putting the chicken with the feed, but not leaving the feed there. Put the feed with the fox. Fox won't eat that. Back to the chicken. It's not very hard. You just have to make sure you don't leave anybody together who's going to eat the thing that you leave them with. She tells me, if you remember that suspicious looking bush well now I can click on it and it reveals a cave inside this cave you'll find a few narrow platforms that you can jump to they're slippery and if you stand on them too long a stalactite will fall on your head if you fall down no problem go to the left and jump back up which I did totally to show you right there and that that was not to show you that was uh ahem, that was Captain Crawfish messing up okay jump basically you want to land straight down you don't want to land in a run so try to come right down on the platform and head over and here it is it's the first jewel of Nabuti this is the purple jewel and the easiest way to get out here really is rather than trying to jump on these platforms again just head down to the water and then straight up to the door back out to the falls there is one more thing to do in this scene before we leave and then before we never come back here again we can also jump up on the left here above where the airplane has landed when you do that, you'll pick up this flower. It's a sacred flower, if you remember. Somebody trades for flowers and herbs back on the booty. But rather than go there right now, let's try to accomplish a few other things out in Eastern Africa. Next stop is the Mountains of the Moon. This is a little similar to <laughs> the Blue Nile Falls, except this is much more hazardous because this horned quadruped, I don't actually know what species it is, will 
bonk you pretty darn good. However, we can use it to our advantage. There's a high platform. And that guy will headbutt you up here. So here's a, a woman that we can talk to. She's looking for a cactus fig that she can't quite reach, so with our superior jumping abilities, we can go get it. Now, since she's trying to find it, should I give it to her? Of course not. It's mine. <laughs> I'm going to use it later. So long, lady. Thanks for pointing out the thing that you wanted so bad. Uh, continue climbing, running and jumping. The boulders will fall more or less on a regular schedule. Plus, you got these goat-like animals that you have to avoid. Maybe they are just goats. Should I have looked this up before recording a walkthrough? Absolutely not. Now we're in the slippery frozen sections. One of our classic Pop Tropica tropes is the icy snowy mountain. And up here is a, a man who is not dressed for the weather, standing in front of the cave. Let's go ahead and talk to him. If we can defeat him at a game of Mancala, he'll let us into the cave. You may remember that we parodied Mancala on Mock Tropica because it is kind of difficult to learn. Once you learn it, it's not that hard to win. Though. Your best move to start with is to click on this cup three from the right. That will end with one stone in your tray and you get another turn. You see what I've done there. Anytime you land one in a cup on the bottom, you'll capture the stones that are in the cup above. So you'll see my opponent try to do that. <laughs> he just did it right there. Essentially, the strategy is to either end your turn in your own tray so you can go again, or end it in a cup opposite your opponent so that you can steal his stones. That being the case, try to mess with the number of stones in his cups so that he can't do one of those things to you. I know it's a little bit complicated. Probably the best way to do it is simply to watch my moves exactly and repeat them because the game does play out generally the same way each time. You see, I'm doing my best here to land in my tray. If I can't land in my tray, I try to land in a cup opposite one where he has stones. And I'll capture all of those. And there's a certain point at which once you've captured more than half the stones, the rest of it's just academic, like you've either won or lost at that point. So the last few turns sort of are just the game playing themselves out. You see, I've basically already won. There's kind of nothing that can happen now to keep me from, from winning this game, and that's because I am so good at Mangala. And you can always play again until you figure it out if you want to. It is honestly pretty fun. Here we are in yet another slippery, challenging cave. Uh, this time... Yep, I've just, I just wanted to show you what to do when you fall, that's all. Uh, there is a cell phone down here, so you do want to go down here and get this. This is where you'll find some truly classic Pop Tropica Easter eggs. I'll show you a couple of them right now. If you dial 911 on the phone and then the green button to place the call. Now I'm wearing a police hat. You can also dial 1225, 1225, December 25th. That will put a Santa Claus hat out on you automatically. Uh, and there are actually uh, one or two more that I'll leave to you to try to find because they are really fun. Uh, but either way, getting back to business, jump all the way over to the right, and there we have it. The second jewel. This is the red jewel of Nabuti. That's two of the five that we need to find. We're starting to run out of things we can do without returning to Nabuti. There's a little bit we can do first in the coyote. So this is a very old and kind of empty sort of tribal village. As I head over to the right, you'll see this enormous turtle. This is going to be a hungry turtle. It's actually probably a tortoise, isn't it? It's living on the earth. So use the, the fruit that you found, and the very large tortoise is going to slowly amble his way over there. You see that he's left behind some kind of mark on the ground. There's actually not, nothing we can do with that yet, but we'll take care of that pretty shortly. Other thing that we can do right now, we just saw that, that colorful thing up there. No, you don't jump on the tortoise's shell as much as it seems like I think that, that we should do that. Jump on the roof of that hut and jump up for the gold hut. So now we have two things that, if you remember, the traders on the booty said they would trade. One was the flower that we found at the Blue Nile Falls, and the other is the gold nugget we just found. This first lady wants an ancient artifact, which we still don't have, but if I talk to this lady, she will trade me a desert turban for the blue lily. Yes, I will. Again, you're welcome to say no, but then there won't be very much for you to do again on the booty island. We'll take this turban. It is both stylish and functional. And talk to this guy who wants gold nugget for a digital camera. 
actually. I mean, the gold seems like it's probably worth more than a digital camera, but you got to remember this island came out in uh, 2008, 2009. Digital cameras were more expensive then. We will take that. Having those items in our possession now opens up most of the rest of what we need to do. Not quite all of it, but most of it. So let's head back to the map, and there's a couple of places we can go to that we haven't been to yet. The first one is going to be Giza, the location of the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx. First thing is to put on this turban. If you don't have it on, the workers here, also in their stylish turbans, will knock you back. But if you're wearing that turban, he'll give you a shot. If you noticed something on the handle, we'll take a closer look at it right now. It says that Vince Graves, his phone number is 555-6789. Remember that. Not that we can't look again if we need to. Here's Vince over here. He's a very mean and kind of nasty archaeologist. He's trying to raid the tomb. More Lara Croft than Indiana Jones, I guess. Although more Belloc than either of them. If you don't get that reference, I'm sorry. He's looking for a way inside the tomb of the Sphinx. He thinks there's a jewel, probably one of the jewels of the booty that we're looking for. But he's also got something in his bag that I think we want to check out. So let's give him a call here, 6789. And the phone will start to ring inside his tent. Good coverage out there by the pyramids. Now that he's gone, <laughs> those guys bail out, so it's not a very good boss, is he? And now we can check out his bag. And inside his bag is a moonstone. Once again, Vince, we see there is nothing you can possess which I cannot take away. This is actually pretty easy. You just jump right up to this empty thing that looks a whole lot like a round jewel. Use the moonstone. So we didn't even have to take it to some weirdo other scene. We could just use it in this scene. And it opens up the door to the tomb. Let's go in. Inside the tomb will be a lot of challenges, perhaps nothing more challenging than getting down through the door. Uh, a series of challenges here. First, I want you to look at this in the background. You see those four images from bottom to top. You want to remember those, but they won't come into play for quite a while. So here's our first puzzle. Click on this thing on the wall, and there are four platforms in the room that change according to what I'm doing here. If you click on any one of these, the others all turn. What we want to do is get them all horizontal, just like that. Now, you can go up onto this platform, and there are the four sections of it that are all horizontal, and that allows us to pass through this scene and out to the right. Then climb up to the next level of the tomb, and here's a fairly easy puzzle. There are those four blocks you'll see that each have part of a design on them, and where I'm standing is the completed design. So what we need to do is push the blocks off of the, the top platform, and then arrange them on the floor so that the pattern matches. The main thing here is to make sure you give yourself enough room to work. If you screw up, you'll see that reset rope. You can always pull that, and it will start things over. But the main thing is, as long as you keep an eye on which ones go on the end, and make sure you give yourself lots of room between them it's a super easy puzzle. I think that of all the things in the tomb, which is generally a pretty challenging area, this is the easiest, and also there's basically no penalty for getting it wrong, because you can always just pull that rope. So here we go. We'll head right on to the next, more difficult challenge. Now, if you remember those four images that we saw when we came in, this is where that comes into play. We're going to jump and land on the section of the platform that matches the order of those pictures. So humanoid weird knife thing, bird eye, and then jump up. As soon as you jump off of those platforms, they'll fall. So I, I know I went through that very quickly, but that is the way to do it. This room will have kind of a similar puzzle. There's a few things happening in this room. There are four levers that can be pulled. There is this image in the middle of the room that has these four statues carved in relief on the wall in a specific order from left to right. And then the last thing is that each of the levers has one of those statues up above it. So jump up to show you here. There's the whatever it is, bat maybe with the big ears. And to the left of that is what appears to be a monkey, what appears to be a bird, and what appears to be a pop tropical. So again, we'll look at the order on this carving. Bat, bird, monkey, pop tropical. We need to pull the levers in that order. Degree of difficulty? 
as soon as you pull the first lever, the room starts filling up with sand. And that's our timer. There's the bird and falling in the sand. If the room fills up again, this puzzle does have a reset mechanism. No problem, you can't actually lose. You just need to do it over if you, if you mess up. But if you do what I'm doing, <laughs> you'll notice even with as much as I am kind of messing up, I did do it in time. And here we've got a mummy holding the blue jewel of Nabudu. Now it is mine. All mine. So does that leave two more to find, I think. And now what is always struck me as sort of an unreasonably fun part is getting back out of the tomb. It is designed in such a way that you just sort of plummet back down. Remember, you have to jump to make the floor collapse here. That's very much part of the fun. And we sort of quickly and easily drop all the way back to the beginning. Now, if you mess up on the, the jumping platforms, you have to start from here, and that is annoying. So do it right the first time. That's my pro tip to you. There are a couple more places to go to. First, I'm going to head back to the Kaya Forest. If you remember that mark on the ground, sure looked like an X marking the spot kind of a thing. Well, now I have that shovel that we just got in Giza. So head over here and open the inventory and use the shovel. Let's see what we can find. Where did that tortoise go, by the way? So we've dug up an ebony elephant, but that's not all. Here are a couple of spirits who perhaps don't want us robbing them. Let's talk to them and find out. They are the spirits of the forest. Yeah, I, I surmised. They are here because... Okay, a thief stole the sacred fingo. Return the fingo. Where can I get a fingo? Why can't I talk to the other spirit? Okay, well, we did dig up the ebony elephant, so I think that will come in handy. But there's another stop to make while we're out here. That is the safari. You remember we traded for the digital camera earlier. You can certainly come to the safari as soon as you're able to get in the plane, but without the digital camera, you can't actually do anything here, which is why I haven't come here yet. I'll just go straight to the third dialogue option. Zeke wants somebody to take photographs of seven different animals. Since we have the digital camera, we can do that. This opens up a, a pop-up minigame, and what you want to do is take a picture of a giraffe. Just move the zebra. Move the cursor around until you have a clear shot of an animal, and then take the picture. So we've got the bird. The animals come and go. So if you take a picture of an animal when it's behind a bush, or when it's you know, out of focus, or not near the center of the screen, it won't count as a good picture. You'll see of the three and now four that I've taken, there's a green check mark. You'll see, I think, a red X if you take a bad picture. But Captain Crawfish don't do bad pictures. I'm gonna keep looking. Uh, you saw that elephant come out there, he'll come back. They all move on really simple patterns. Just wait till he's out in the open. Picture that's five, I need two more. There are more than seven animals. I'm not actually sure how many there are. The giraffe is obviously very easy. Keep looking around. I'm going to bore you with the parts where I'm just looking around. This, in my experience, is what actual nature watches are like. <laughs> looking at nothing. You never really get a view of a gazelle like that. Just need one more. If I can find... Maybe there's a lion out here somewhere that I haven't seen yet. Yep, yep, okay. Oh, yeah, there's the lion. Just wait for the lion to come out. All right. So that's seven. Uh, there's room for eight pictures. That means you can make a mistake and keep going, which is fine. But you can also close out after getting seven. It doesn't happen automatically. And the photos look great. Get ready for a disappointing reward from Zeke. No money, but his old work hat. Fortunately, it is something we actually need, believe it or not. One place we have not gone to yet on our map of Africa, and it is where we need the hard hat. Again, I could have gone there earlier, but without the hard hat, there's really no point in doing it. So we'll head there now to the diamond mines of South Africa. And again, just like we needed the black turban to progress into the Giza scene, here you need the hard hat to progress into the diamond mine scene. Otherwise, you're going to get as far as this guy right here, and he's going to tell you, can't go any further without a hard hat. Now this electrified fence is going to cause us some trouble, so head all the way over to the right side of the scene here and click on that dial. That turns off the fence for a short period of time. You see the timer in the lower left. Head up this pile of gravel, whatever it is, up onto the conveyor. Just run straight through this gap. 
jump onto the barrel here and then it's uh, basically a door click it says enter so click on that and now we're on the other side but we are not finished dealing with environmental hazards yet watch for minecarts says the sign watch for minecarts says the guy no idea what they're talking about let's just head right up this ramp and oh okay all right well the mic okay those minecarts watch out for those minecarts all right now we know to watch out for the minecarts we do need to still head up these ramps now if you know they're coming it actually becomes fairly easy you don't even need to ride up them like i'm doing right now uh, they drop at a reasonably slow rate so you should be able to dodge one then jump up dodge one then jump up and head all the way over to the left where they're coming up from and as soon as one leaves you can click down to enter into the mine shaft into the mine shaft where it is perfectly safe see that uh, that electrical box spewing sparks well what's that gonna do as i push this leaky barrel that's what it does so turn that off you'll see the stop the uh, sparks stop now push this barrel as far as you can you see again it's, it's creating a trail of some kind of flammable probably liquid until it stops at that rock no problem as soon as you press this button the, the game will kind of freeze and you'll see this barrel explode so that's great that rock was not actually stopping us before but what is stopping us yep nobody's been down the shaft since it caved in there you go a bunch of rocks cave in now i know that you know what to do and that is to again turn this off and now push the explosive barrel all the way this is uh this is basically a crossfit exercise right here push it all the way past this lollygagger who is doing nothing except trying to look good with a pickaxe until it reaches the wall there once again turn on the switch sit back and enjoy the show and again i like how this guy here is so unconcerned about all the explosions he doesn't even flinch i heard that cool guys don't look at explosions i guess that's where he's coming from on this heading to the right we're going to now be deeper and deeper into the mines start by pushing this mine cart or start by running to the side of it useless you know what okay start pushing it as soon as it gets to a certain point you will automatically jump up onto it and now starts this minecart mini game there are two things you can do you can duck and you can jump so duck when it goes up and as you start heading back down move your cursor up and prepare to jump when you see the sign duck and jump this is one of those challenges that is not that hard once you know how to do it but if you don't know how to do it you are sure to fall off numerous times and that's okay you know that's how you learn i actually deleted several instances of me failing at this before the version i'm using in this video and now i'm admitting it so i just blew the whole thing we are almost through with the diamond mines up here is what must be a billion dollars worth of diamonds but we're looking for one in particular we're looking for the nabuti stone the way we'll identify it is by finding the jewel that has an inscription on it so you click on that little magnifying glass move it all around don't know if it's the same jewel every time or if it's randomly determined but you, there you go looking for that little weird triangular thing as soon as you find it now you've got the white jewel of nabuti and with that we have but one nabuti jewel left to go so let's hit up our plane and go back to nabuti where we still have one item to trade we still have that ebony elephant we know that the lady on the left at the trading stall is into old things like that and she will give us this ancient talisman once again i don't know why you would say no you should just make the trade automatically nobody would say no here we get our fingo we have found the fingo and if you remember we need to give the fingo <laughs> go to the spirits back at the kaya forest we don't sound like crazy people at all do we we're going to give the fingo to the spirits of the kaya forest well it's just that easy again click on this guy tell him you found the fingo give him the fingo and our reward is yes the fifth and final the booty jewel we have them all let's just check okay yeah that's great that you're at peace I, I got my jewels that's what matters let's check really quickly and make sure we have one two three four we got them all time to go back to the museum back to the plane for the final time back to the booty. 
wish you could fly across Africa this fast. Africa is big. Land on Main Street. Past everybody for whom we no longer have any use. Into the museum. Accidentally talked to this guy. Yeah, thanks. I checked it out. And again, we'll talk to the lady at the totem. Now they must be placed in the correct positions, of course. Of course, there's one final puzzle. This is a logic puzzle. We have rules for where the jewels go in relation to one another. So you see them there. Red is one space below green. Green is three spaces from blue. White cannot be next to purple. Blue is next to white. And purple is two spaces from red. So, you know, that if you don't know exactly what it means, maybe you can work it out on a piece of paper. You're welcome to do what I'm doing here, which is just put them in more or less randomly. Although you can't actually switch them back and forth. You have to take them out and then drop them back to the ground. So uh, having done that and kind of messed that up, I'm going to go about this a little bit more systematically now. So we know that red is below green, so green must be at least not the bottom. Try putting that in the top. Try putting the now hidden red jewel below it. And then if green is three spaces from blue, that leaves only one place that blue can go. One, two, three. Yeah, that works. White cannot be next to purple. Blue is next to white, so... think when you started this video that you were going to see Captain Crawfish's brain melting down from the strain of trying to do a basic logic puzzle. That's, that's the pop tropic of difference. It does look like we're closing in on the solution here, so just do it in that order. Purple, green, red, white, and blue. Don't worry about learning or thinking. Just copy me and you'll win. That's the way to get through this life. All right, it turns out this is an alien figure. It goes back to space a very familiar looking blue planet. Actually really cool. Amazing. The jewels are of alien origin. That is actually a twist ending that nobody saw coming. I think that's pretty cool. And there you have it. That is how to complete the booty island and hopefully have fun doing it. Again, this is island of the month for May. So if you want to earn some bonus credits, head to poptropica.com right now. This is usually a members only island, but it's open for everybody in the month of May only. As always, thanks for watching this video, and thanks for playing Pop Tropica.